how i explain it or answer it is to operate an ai you need an hi you need that human intelligence to operate it right uh, let's let's pick that example from spider man uh, dr octopus right very young when i saw that the minute he shut off the hi the ai took control and it just didn't work out so i think that is what will happen even in companies if they are not intelligent enough to realize while it can reduce manpower for sure i would not say that so t- let's say that you know uh, a work was done by three people now it could be done by one or two that for sure ai will do but i don't think that you can replace human intelligence with anything uh not for now i i don't think the technology is in yet talking about my journey yaar it was very accidental honestly uh i was an engineer in great uh right like, like right out of 12th uh, my parents thought that i am good with academics and they thought that you know science is the way and unfortunately internet wasn't very pro at that time and uh, all the counseling you would get is from some of the adults or seniors in the family and that's what i did i asked them around and somehow engineering there were there were two options technically chucked out for me either you can become a doctor or you can be an engineer and somehow engineering felt a little easier than um, than being a doctor so i i opted for that and uh, the good thing that happened to me is that we would do a lot of model united nations uh, uh for uh, for our our debating hunger right and uh, that's when we i realized that there's a lot of talk around changing the world there was a lot of talk around all of this but nobody is doing something about it right and forget nobody i'm not doing something about it and that that's when you know four of us just uh sat at a ccd thought of doing something opened up an ngo went to the united nations got a 10000 dollar grant and uh, that's how you know the the organization came into picture and uh, we started to work on the sides that's how i actually did my engineering while my parents would think that you know i'm burning the midnight oil studying and doing all of that i was technically on foot you know going to the uh, to the streets of Najafgur and uh you know explaining people about uh, what sex education is and why it's important and uh what is sex trafficking and how should they stay clear of it uh, we were also doing a lot of work with mcd schools you know tied up with uh, uh teach for india imparted art education uh, and and all of this was happening and that's when i I uh, realized that you know I'm technically good at storytelling you know I'm I'm a I'm a storyteller again an accident people made me realize that and that's when I understood that okay you know marketing can be given a shot and that's that's something that comes naturally to me so I uh, I was fortunate enough to land an uh, land a job with PepsiCo at that time I was doing research marketing with them and the first project that I was working on funny uh, that it is because I would never drink Mountain Dew but was that why is mountain dew doing better with college students and uh, pepsi is not so what what is that uh, what, what is that secret ingredient right and uh, that was the project and i was thoroughly enjoying myself i was 6 7 months in i think and that's when i realized that you know unfortunately we're living in a country where uh, if i want to grow this way it's going to take me another 20 good years to actually be somebody who's heard at a pepsi So I quickly changed paths. I I went to, did my MBA with IMT. I was a gold medalist again, uh, and this was the first one, which is not because you're academically inclined. You know, uh, there is a lot more to an MBA than than just books and uh, and uh, frames. I I was good to talk. I was good with storytelling, and that's how you know this came along. and that's when it opened up a lot of avenues uh, i did a lot of college placements and i finally realized that uh, mnc's are not for me uh, i i wanted i'm i at least i would think that i'm full of ideas uh, the, the young blood would catch up to me and i thought that you know startup is the world to enter into and uh probably i could make a little bit of difference and i always dreamt of doing something of my own i i i never knew that you know whether uh, and i would i had already gotten a taste from my ngo so i just felt that you know uh i i want to do something of my own and probably doing the startup way is the right way and that's when i joined this company by the name of cashkaro.com it, it is a ratan tada funded company 
and uh, I, I started as a marketing executive and left after three, three and a half years as the uh, project lead. So that was a big achievement for me. Learned a lot there. Learned, you know, when you don't have a lot of money, how can you still uh, be good at marketing? How 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 can you still do or build a brand? You know, even if money is a crunch, because you know, at Pepsi, it was never a problem. You would ask, you'd need a signature, and it would just come to you. Like, okay, this is my travel that I've spent on this. Here, it was it was very different. And that's something that you know gave me a lot of prowess to think that okay I can make a difference. Uh, after Kashkaro, I think I joined uh, Cast Twenty Four. I uh, did amazing campaigns at Cast Twenty Four. I was exploring other creative sites that I had to myself. Also featured in a couple of videos, like doing that for a bit. And obviously, you know, uh, worked a lot on their positioning campaigns. For example, the Bye Bye Drive. that happened right uh and and that made me understand that brand is a lot more than just um you know uh getting the transactions because kashkaro was a very uh you know transaction based company wherein you know you you would you would care for the small wins whereas at cast 24 i realized that the horizon is quite big and that's when finally you know i i met ankit uh it was it was actually a funny story that you know rohan who was my boss at Kashkaro uh, who was who was one of the founder gifted me a dine out plus card because i had done something good at the company and uh, the dine out plus card at that time would give you a 25% flat off or a 1 plus 1 on a uh, meal at at any five star restaurant i used the product and i was like it was my guilty pleasure honestly i just felt that oh my god this product needs to reach more people this product needs to uh, it will fly really well with people and uh, so this has been another uh, thing about me that every uh, every organization that i've marketed for or helped marketing in uh, is is something that i've used you know i've i've used them as a product first or a service first to actually feel that is it working for me because i i i the, that, that marketing streak of mine is quite personal i think it 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 goes in that tangent right so every time i'm using a new product uh, more than you know uh, feeling the product and thinking how can i market this what is it which which kind of category would it reach and that's that's what happened in dine out and you know me and ankit met and i think that day was history i've been with dine out ever since uh, swiggy was a merger so i've technically been with dine out for good 6 years now my half my career honestly and um, that's been fun uh, it's been a very very nice ride and um, i've i've learned a lot to many uh, we've seen covid together but yeah uh, like uh, one of the best journeys that i've had honestly uh, got it very young uh, you know when we were at becoming i we were trying to sort a small problem right uh, this is the ngo that i'm talking about we were trying to solve a very small problem wherein i wanted people i wanted to recruit uh delhi university students to do the volunteer work right now um it, we would get loads of forms at that point in time because do students were supposed to do a 3 month 4 month volunteer program to get extra credit right so sourcing those volunteers was very easy the problem began that these mcd schools were all over delhi ncr right now the problem started when let's say that sanjula was recruited as a volunteer in sanjula puts up in ghaziabad but i would give sanjula an mcd school which is right up to sector 72 in gurgaon that was a toughy because it would take sanjula 3 hours to reach the destination so to reach at a 10 am school sanjula would start at 6:30 in the morning that was declining my volunteer retention rate and uh, we always used to think and for a good period of time we would think that i think this volunteer reduction is happening or retention is not good with us because uh, you know we're not paying them anything or you know it's it's because and everybody would tell me but that is what volunteering is right people would understand that so it took me data to actually realize oh my god somebody is spending so much time reaching the destination that by the time that they're reaching there their energy is all gone they're not feeling up for volunteering and 
you know then three hour session then three hour coming back so it would make their saturdays and imagine i am pulling out a due student at 7 am on a saturday and letting them go at 4 or 5 in the evening it was a mayhem and that's when data told me that okay no that's now how it's supposed to be done restructured changed our strategy and the retention problem was solved and that was my first encounter with data when i understood that okay fine if you have the correct if you have the correct excel in place everything is perfect and then there was no looking back i mean you know at kashkaro rohan was a very data back founder very very like i would take an idea to him and he was like prove it to me where is the data how can i and then that made me very data first so you know when i would go to a company like a dine out or when i would work at a company like a swiggy they would not have to tell me how why those questions would never come because my answers would be ready i would uh, you know in fact questions started to come out of data i i made it a very regular practice that every now and then i'm looking at um, you know how uh, the numbers are or or what is the opd like at swiggy and that would give me ideas on you know what to do next so the first one is that and that was a big achievement for me as well so i'll tell you something you know when covid hit i had just joined dinar i think i was 8 to 9 months in and uh, still proving myself uh, while the founders had a lot of faith and trust in me i i just as i as i told you, you know i'm that kind of a person who'd like the limelight around her so i was very intently trying to prove myself that okay i can do this i can do that and shabang covid happens and i was like oh my god everything in the restaurant business shut like how can i prove my worth anymore or or what do i do to sort of you know uh, and that's when it hit us uh, that uh, the restaurants were shut right but they were soon going to reopen it's not like we would be in in our houses for the for the for the next eternity right we would all move out and that's when the idea came in that what if we built restoration guidelines you know resurrection guidelines reopening guidelines for the restaurants let's tell them what to do what not to do why to do come out as pioneering uh, thought leaders you know uh, tell the world that okay this is what dine outs made of right and sort of went very good with our b2b product also so uh, you know i wrote these uh, guidelines uh, we did a white paper together uh, i did it with mr ankit mehrotra who's the founder at uh, who was one of the founders with dine out and uh, you know uh, very excited to actually share uh, here as well that you know miss rupendra brar who is with the ministry of tourism you know together we uh, sort of uh, you know uh, went ahead and uh, gave out that white paper to the world uh, and that garnered so much pr accolade for dine out like we were in the news uh left right and center and that was the dullest time for dine out please understand that uh you know in that was our shining armor honestly we were being talked about we were not a forgotten brand because we were very scared of it right that it will take for for all that we've built up till here it will take people seconds to forget about us so how do we keep ourselves relevant and that was a question that was so quickly answered by us uh we suddenly became the thought leaders in the industry uh you know our our, our b2b products tried to uh, actually went and skyrocketed and all of that happened because we did this one digital pr and in fact we uh we also hosted the first digital uh press conference you know uh wherein uh, about 28 press and media people attended uh and we did no pr buzz around it we just sent them emails we said that you know we are launching this white paper with mr pendel brar why don't you come join us etc and everybody was there and it was it was amazing for us like right we were we were like and people who couldn't attend would then call us or ankit or you know schedule interviews and we suddenly became the talk uh and then that followed up with two more white papers that we released during those three months then when we were in complete lockdown so you know i remember my family calling me in and they were asking kya kar rahe ho tum log why are you so busy uh you know all the time i'm calling you my mother would tell me and i would like and he, and she would blatantly tell all the restaurants are shut i don't know what work you're doing i was like 
ओके हार्ड टू एक्सप्लेन बट आई वेल सो या दैट वॉज दैट वॉज आई थिंक अ बिग बिग अचीवमेंट एंड वन ऑफ माई फेवरेट कैंपेन एंड दैट ऑल्सो टॉट मी दैट यू नो वेन दे इज नथिंग टू लुक फॉरवर्ड टू जस्ट अ स्मॉल आइडिया कुड चेंज द गेम फॉर यू सो आई थिंक दैट वॉज वन and the second campaign again was at dine out uh, we call it uh, safe to eat out so dine out came up with this entire campaign by the name of safe to eat out wherein we told uh, the world uh, act, so so we we sorted the restaurant side of the the bit by doing these white papers etc but there was a consumer side you know wherein a consumer was scared to get out of their houses like we were young blood we would be like okay let's go but our parents were scared you know they were scared that what if we fall ill because then because then it's difficult and we were scared for our parents that what if we go out we get it back in the house right so and omicron believe me was a very very difficult phase right so then we pulled out this another 360 degree marketing campaign which involved pr communications digital of btl everything together we cooked up this entire imc which was around safe to eat out uh, so the restaurant bit was enable safe to eat out and the consumer side was safe to eat out wherein we told people what precautions do you need to take why is contactless dining becoming so important what are the things that you should not touch at a restaurant uh you know because i i remember i take so i've always been a very consumer backward person you know i i take a lot of interviews talk to a lot of customers to understand what the problem is because you know as marketers we assume a lot of times we feel that this is the problem but when you actually talk to the customer that was never even a thought in their heads right so when i would talk to people i and i would ask them that why are you not going out why are you not dining out the government has you know lifted the restrictions why are you still home and people would tell me that you know restaurant time was a time of peace you know we would go out enjoy chill have a good laugh come back home it was it was it was me time but now it's suddenly become becoming about you know go out rush with the food come back the entire uh, you know fun of being at a restaurant's lost and that's when you know that when that problem hit me it became much more important to make people people realize that there were a set of restaurants where it's safe to eat out where it's all right they have taken ample precautions to make sure that you know uh, you're safe so i think that was my other favorite uh, campaign and that bought me a lot of awards as well you know uh, in resto dine out won a lot of awards uh, and uh, i was awarded uh, you know the best marketer by agency report i was awarded the best marketer by inkspell so i think that was a lot of uh, you know personal achievement for me i was nominated uh, you know for 30 under 30 by bw disrupt disrupt because of this campaign so i think uh, that uh, was another another favorite of my campaign while a marketer should not choose and you know everything that i've done is my favorite but yeah these were the two that really stood out for me while there are some transactional metrics let's talk about swiggy currently right so let's say we do a campaign and if it's an awareness campaign then there is certain set of metrics that we look at if it's a consideration campaign then there is another set of metrics right and if it's a transactional pure and pure sales campaign then we just look at the numbers and how many how many sales were we able to draw but uh, while all of this is very transactional there is another side to measure which is sentiment analysis which is positioning analysis which is telling and no and understanding what people are actually thinking about your brand so let's say there is a consideration uh, campaign that i'm doing what is consideration there is a blinket there is a zepto there is an instamart example right I, and i'm talking in these terms because i lead marketing for instamart product marketing right so now there are these three uh, uh, you know competitors and i want people to consider instamart for their next purchase while there is a transactional matrix which will tell me that you know were people so let's say i had an opd opd means open uh, sorry uh, order order per day of four example it's a very hypothetical number we are nowhere close to this our numbers are in craziness but let's say it's four right now after doing a consideration campaign i want to measure whether i moved the needle from four to 10 was i able to do that 
So that's one area of success, right? The other area of success would be I I do a sentiment analysis and I uh, do a qualitative as well as a quant analysis, probably doing surveys, focus groups, etc., trying to understand from people that when I did this campaign. A did they see it? If they did, did they consider my brand? If they did consider my brand, what was the outcome? Sometimes the outcome could be as simple as while you were in our consideration set, there was another reason that I chose probably a competitor, right? But that does not mean that my campaign was a fail. There could be other. So it's very important to do both sorts of analysis. One is your quant, and the other is your qualitative. So that's been my learning with marketing. Yes, there are a lot of pros. There are a lot of pros. Um, firstly, the pro is in the data, right? Today, a lot of people uh, do not know how to read data. While I've been working with data for good twelve years now, I still think that there are misses. There are times when I feel that okay, this is something that I didn't get right, or probably if I would have read it this way, it would have been a little more easier. That's why you need these people. You know, there are so many data analytics. I keep interacting with on a daily basis because I feel that how can I, you know, use churn etc. This data for my advantage, right? So I feel that that's a very very important bit which ai solves today right i would take a lot of time with my uh, you know data people and i would try to figure it out ki yaar what is it? and sometimes you know uh, so so see marketers and data analytics is is a little you get it right so how i would understand of it is that what if they are not getting me what if there are bits and pieces of it that i'm missing so i think that way ai really helps it helps with data structuring it helps with using data to your advantage it helps for somebody who's not data inclined to also use it so and i feel that forget pr forget marketing i think for any kind of business unit data is the key that's how you begin everything right so if your foundation is loose unfortunately the entire building cripples right so i think that way ai will really help in the field of pr also i think time saving today while i would take and and pure and pure from a pr perspective right uh, marketing to has much more that ai offers but if if we speak pure and pure on pr it would take me good two two and a half days to write a good pr story now i can do it in half a day because everything is suddenly very fast for me right things have become a uh, small like the time you utilized is small and i don't have to spend a lot of time researching everything's made very easy for me uh, so that's that's the pro for sure but there are cons i'll explain today while i would spend a lot of time researching you know reading this reading that today because of the ease of information i think sometimes you also miss on, miss out on a lot of information right so I, i personally make it a point that i don't i don't skip books i don't i don't skip pages i i actually uh, you know skim through and do my research proper to write a good story so i think that is also very very important right uh, that i feel is a con that you know today things are very for granted and you know some people just chat gpt or a pr story and i i i feel that is a little bit of a disadvantage but i think uh, with time people will learn and those people any which way will be eliminated i think uh, uh, with 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 uh, ai to everybody's exposure these days uh, or disposal these days i think uh, soon that problem will be eradicated as well how i explain it or answer it is to operate an ai you need an hi you need that human intelligence to operate it right uh, let's let's pick that example from spider man or doctor octopus right very young when i saw that the minute he shut off the hi the ai took control and it just didn't work out so i think that is what will happen even in companies if they are not intelligent enough to realize while it can reduce manpower for sure i would not say that so let's say that you know uh, a work was done by three people now it could be done by one or two that for sure ai will do but i don't think that you can replace human intelligence with anything uh, not for now i i don't think the technology is in yet
while uh, other marketers might have a different answer to this my answer is how do i capture positioning that's a that's a matrix that i've been dying you know so i i'll, I'll tell you a lot of times you know we marketers are told that this is how i want to position my brand right and we do everything to do that at least in our power and then everybody answers me you know whenever i go to a research team or whenever i go to a marketing research team they tell me that yaar yeah, boss uh it's going to take a while to measure that because positioning you can't just measure so i always dream that what will be that one uh one um, you know metric that will quickly help me with uh, identifying what is the positioning of my brand is it synonymous to what i want to position it to or is it something else so i think that for me is that dream matrix that i really want to come in because i think that's going to make me a millionaire if i could tell and and i and i really wish that you know somehow it's not out there in the market like ai and i secretly get that weapon so that you know i can come negotiate with companies that hey you know i can tell how what what was your positioning campaign like how did how well did it perform yeah honestly it it's going to sound like a lot of preach a lot preachy but uh, i think be real be innovative be creative because uh data will solve for everything else right uh ai would solve for everything everything else the the good human intelligence that's required is how creative are you how how is your brain you know the left side of the brain really needs to work i think that is that one advice that i'd like to give the younger generation and honestly they have access to much more tools to make it possible right at our times come and that that makes it a little difficult for them also honestly because today i type up something and there are thousand i you won't believe i was suggesting a campaign the other day and somebody in the room again a very young enthusiast in the room said but anjula something like this has already been done i was like yaar kya baat kar rahe matlab you know it's so it's becoming difficult by the day also so i think as long as the creative juices are flowing whether it be communications whether it be marketing whether it be um uh pr i think that bit would be sorted because for everything else we have ai we have data we have every piece in place yeah i think creative be creative that's the advice